today I wanted to do a walk around video of my 86 Bronco 2 we call Gilligan. Well, first of all, if you're new to the channel, you're probably wondering why Gilligan. I will do a, a quick, short version of the story. Um, the reason we call the truck Gilligan is I belong to a off-road club, uh, the Glass City Crawlers here in Toledo, Ohio. Um, Toledo is birthplace of the Jeep, so you can imagine that it is a uh, very large Jeep population. Um, I was asking about trying to find a cheap budget off-road truck since um, I didn't have one at the time and someone in the club pointed me the direction of this Bronco 2. It was actually on an island. Um, I got in contact with a gentleman who lived on an island off the shore in Ohio um, in a place called Putin Bay. It is a little uh, party town on a little island. Um, so uh, a deal was made. I drove uh, an hour and a half from my house, truck and trailer, me and my buddy, to the island. Uh, we ferried over. I purchased the truck for $150 and then we drove an hour and a half home. I'm doing the math here, hour and a half there, hour and a half back, three hour tour. And for $150, I rescued it from the island. And on the drive home, me and my buddy got to talking and, you know, Jeep people like to name their trucks and, uh, you know, plaster the names on the hoods. And, well, if I'm going to be in an off-road club with a bunch of Jeeps, we had to give it a name. So it was a quirky little odd-looking truck and we rescued it from an island three hours away. So the name fit. So... Here we have Gilligan. So, what is Gilligan? Let's take a closer look. So, of course, it did not start off looking anything like this. Um, it's an 86 Bronco 2. It was a 2.9 V6 automatic truck. Of course, gutted everything like that. And uh, you can see all of those videos on my channel from start to finish, from the day I brought it home up until the uh, latest trip that we took it on gutted everything. The truck had giant rust holes in the floorboards from the cats that were living in it. It peed all over the floor and rusted holes in it. The truck was very solid other than that. Uh, the bottom of the doors had a little bit of rust on it. Um, it did have a busted driver's window. That's how the cats were actually getting into it. But here we are. Uh, actually, it's just been about a year from today of me making this video that the truck um, has was uh, actually drove out of the garage for the first time under its own power. So the way it sits today is the uh, body is still all the original body panels, basically. Uh, we fixed the doors. I had my, my buddy Dennis just recently repainted the truck. It is uh, Summit matte black. They're hot rod black, they call it. And that is their uh, Viper red. So it is a matte and a gloss. It's a single stage. There's no clear, nothing's been rubbed out. Didn't want to make it too nice since it is an off-road truck. So it, uh, it is easy to maintain. I've already had to do some touch-ups since the last trip. We did uh, kind of bang up that front corner of the fender right there, but it is what it is. So the truck is, it is lifted about six, six and a half inches. It is on a James Duff straight axle swap kit they sell. It's an all bolt-in kit. It's on three and a half inch James Duff Early Bronco progressive rate coils. I am using Early Bronco Dana 44. These are the narrow uh, axles. So it's a Dana 44 front and a nine inch rear. It is the, uh, the more rare, I think it's a 77, uh, the, the higher GVW nine inch rear. So it was a factory 31 spline with the bigger drum brakes. 35 inch. KM2 BFGs, 15 by 10 aluminum Pro Comp wheels. The rest of the suspension consists of the James Duff long travel radius arms. And the rear are Skyjacker soft ride leaf springs for a Ranger. There are inch and a half blocks to uh, level it off because of my spare tire. 
And I do have Belltech shackles in the rear to help compensate. The truck is on all duff, 7030 shocks. It rides absolutely beautiful. I do use airsoft pellets in all the tires. I believe there is eight to 10 ounces of pellets in each tire. So um, 65 mile an hour is about really all I, I go in this. And it is smooth as silk up to that speed. Um, I do have a little bit of steering wander, but we'll, uh, we'll get that dialed in. Steering in this is all rough stuff. One ton Y-Link steering. Just their universal kit, cut it to, cut it to fit. That is a uh, Jeep JK uh, steering stabilizer from, uh, uh, geez, Rough Country, I believe it is. I adapted that to fit. I do have 456 gears. There is an Aussie locker. And there are RCV shafts in the front of the truck. And I do have the Yukon the new style 30 spline lockouts on the front. The front bumper is kind of a, a homemade deal. It's been on and off a few different vehicles of mine. We have a Smitty built X2O waterproof 10,000 pound winch. This thing works amazing. It's very fast. I've only had to use it one time to uh, pull myself out. Uh, another highlight of the truck is, is I did the early Bronco headlight swap. Got the seven inch round headlights. There is a video on my page of how to convert that. It was a super simple, I mean, it took me literally 10 minutes to figure out how to get these in here. They're fully adjustable and they actually work amazingly well, way better than the uh, original uh, rectangle headlights that were in the truck. A uh, big fan of those. Gen Wright Jeep <laughs> hood louvers to help get some of the heat out from under the hood. Truck does run amazingly cool, so those work very well. Have to uh, represent the club. Get the club decals on there. Here you can see the dual front shock setup from James Duff. Have my own homemade rock sliders I made on there to protect the rockers. I do have a single exhaust on the truck. It's a two and a half inch. Y pipe going into a single exhaust with a uh, Flowmaster muffler now. Sounds really good, nice and quiet. The decal, I do have a lot of people ask me what does EB2 mean. Um, if you look on my page, you'll see other videos, uh, walk around of my 88 Ranger and also my 83 Thunderbird. My 83 Thunderbird was my idea of a what if car. And what if Ford had made a Thunderbird GT, which they never did. So I kind of had the idea of in 1983, if Ford had made an 83 GT Thunderbird alongside the Mustang GT, what would it have been? Well, I created what I would have thought that would have been. So my thinking with Gilligan was, what if in 1986, in the mid 80s, what if Ford was still making V8 straight axle, four-wheel drive trucks um, same way they did in the uh, in the mid and late 60s so this was kind of my play on that uh, v8 302 straight axle using all early Bronco stuff and basically the truck everything from the door handles down is early Bronco the suspension kit the axles the transmission the transfer case the headlights so um, just kind of a play on the FX4 off-road package that Ford still uses to this day I came up with my uh, EB2 off-road package, so that's what that means. The rear of the truck, I picked up a James Duff tubular rear bumper, and I added my own swing-out tire carrier using parts from EMS off-road, and uh, added a 35-inch spare. This worked out very well. There is a video on the page of the full build of this. added a fire extinguisher to the tire carrier just for safety purposes so anybody on the trail I like to let people know when we take off that I do have this available so 
It's available to anybody to grab in a case of emergency. A uh, recent addition I did, the snaps around the perimeter of the window, I can unbolt the back glass from the truck and remove the glass with a couple wing nuts, pop the shocks off, and since it's just the dog riding in the back or our tote full of our gear, I like to have a little more uh, ventilation in the truck since driving these things in the summertime is like driving a greenhouse. I had a local upholstery shop make me a snap-in window net and I can snap that in when the window's removed and we'll have full, you know, an open open interior for uh, some air through there. And the next plan is to actually pull out the side windows and do the same on the side. And I can kind of show you real quick what that looks like. So obviously I left the glass and I'm not popping that out right now for this, but there's the window net snapped on and uh, the side glass will pretty much look the same. We're going to make some uh, soft tinted windows like Jeep style for the uh, side windows as well. I probably will not be putting the glass back in. But that's what it'll look like. We've already gone out for a few cruises with the dog in the back and he absolutely loves it. So uh, very excited when the uh, summer hits and the heat is here to try this out. Continuing in the back of the truck, um, I did pretty much eliminate the back seat. I'm not crazy on taking a bunch of passengers with me off-roading, so we just folded the seat down, eliminated the back, laid all the rubber down so it's just the dog, and I can throw my big lockable tote back here, and I have the hold downs, I can ratchet strap it down to secure it. We have our high lift bolted down to the floor, have our power tank for some onboard air for airing up the tires and running air tools if we need. And up there you can see the center console with the storage armrest. And it does house a kicker 8-inch subwoofer. And there is a 300-watt subwoofer amp underneath the driver's seat bolted to the floor. It's fairly, uh, fairly clean. We do have some random Bronco 2-style storage. We have our, our uh, tire repair kit. We have our uh, air down valve stems, a spare TFI module with a 4 you're always... <laughs> smart to have on hand here so that's it just the basics back here we do have room to carry the coolers and the tote with all the spare parts and straps and d-rings and whatnot so uh, plenty of room to carry whatever it is that we need on the interior of the truck I did have to replace the floorboard on this side you have to forgive how dirty it is we did just have a trip with it but I did put in some 1990 Mustang GT uh, buckets, did match the color interior, but here is the uh, center console, subwoofer, a little bit of storage, put in a B&M shifter pedestal mounted, the Dana 20 transfer case manual shifter, I did build my own dash bezel, had a buddy of the CNC kind of machined everything out for me. Put in the uh, LED indicators for turn signal, bright lights. We have the uh, switch panel. We have bumper lights, rock LED rock lights, and then the rear backup lights on the bumper. Cell phone mount, nice JVC stereo. And then uh, he did a nice little engraving on there. That was a nice little bonus he did for me. And we have the AEM wideband. We'll get to that here in a minute. But I love these. AEM gauges, or I'm sorry, the speed hut gauges, GPS speedometer, always reads right, does not matter what gears, what tires I have in here, always correct, as long as you have a satellite uh, signal to hook to. Tachometer, and then the four pack of gauges here, these were all custom made, everything from speed hut you pretty much custom make. Um, we have the volts, oil, water, and gas, they all have programmable warning lights, so like my gas level, when I get down to an uh, eighth of a tank, red warning light comes on. Oil pressure, anything below 5 PSI, I get a warning light. Uh, voltage, anything below 10 volts, warning light, you know, so on. So I super like these gauges. They're awesome. They are, they're not cheap, but you get what you pay for. They're made in America. Um, I have had one problem with my speedometer and they immediately had me return uh, return it back to them. They repaired it, sent it back to me like all in the same week. No questions asked. Um, love the company. I use them in all my vehicles. 
So if you never heard of them, check them out. You will literally spend hours on their website building custom gauges. Uh, highly recommend them. So that is the interior here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We do have a power inverter to run the laptop. We'll get to that here in a second. So for Gilligan's powertrain, what we're looking at here is a 1990 5 liter that originally came out of a Lincoln a Mark 7. And I rebuilt it completely and added a Ford Explorer GT40 style intake on it with the 65 millimeter throttle body and I did the full front accessory dress swap on it too. Um, I wanted to have the, the bigger alternator, the 130 amp alternator in particular and the better power steering pump system and I wanted the mechanical clutch fan, the shorter accessory dress created a bunch more room for the radiator and I was able to run a mechanical clutch fan. I do not like electric fans for off-road trucks. I have been burned way too many times off-roading from electric fans failing on me. So this truck I wanted a mechanical fan that I knew would not fail me and it, if it ever did it would just be a matter of going to any parts store and just picking up a replacement clutch for it. And I would be back on my way. Um, the other benefit is this thing runs stupid cool. has a 185 thermostat with the, uh, the louvers in the hood, the radiator that's in here. Um, I have no problems keeping this thing cool. Motor is internally stock. Um, it does have headers. I am using advanced adapters, swap headers. They're just a log style header. Initially, I was running the truck on uh, an 86 Mustang GT harness and uh, same speed density computer and I was having some issues with surging, stalling and terrible gas mileage. Um, I was having bad problems with it going extremely rich under, under full acceleration it would go so rich it would be off the uh, off my air fuel gauge and uh, it would be way down on power. So what I elected to do was I recently swapped the truck over to uh, an EFI source plug and play kit, converting it over to micro squirt. So it's fully programmable now and it runs a million percent better. I can program um, my fuel tables, my timing maps, um, anything I want. It runs so much better. My gas mileage has improved. Um, it's probably more than doubled actually compared to how it did run before. So uh, we'll get to that here in a minute. Um, also, while we're over here, you can see I recently swapped over to the uh, Borgensen. Uh, new steering shaft doesn't have any rag joints in it. And I used a blue top steering gear steering box in the truck to help tighten up the steering. I just recently added that. The uh, intake side, I have the dry flow screen on the air filter that's at waterproof so it can't suck any water into the intake system. I did add a remote TFI mount to get my ignition module away from water, heat sources. So I have that mounted over there. Ford did do that factory later on some of the trucks and vans and so I, I did uh, I did convert that. I guess with the Explorer front dress there is a problem with clearance with this tensioner right here. If you have a TFI module on the distributor, you can't get full rotation to uh, set your timing. So it just makes it easier to go ahead and just remote mount that and get it out of the way anyway. So the transmission is a C4 automatic. It is out of a 75 passenger car. 
It has been converted to four-wheel drive using all early Bronco tail housing, the output shaft, and a Dana 20 T-shift transfer case. And uh, works very well. Um, everything is rebuilt. It's a PA performance rebuild kit in the trans. Uh, it's a stock converter. It's a little bit tight. I probably uh, would, if I could go back, I'd probably put a small stall converter in it. And the uh, transfer case, I just recently rebuilt all of that. Stock gearing in it. It has a Tom Woods rear dry shaft, a stock early Bronco front dry shaft. Still worked in it. So I didn't have to uh, do anything with that. I use all push lock lines and, uh, and fittings on my transmission. We have a deep aluminum pan. You can see the exhaust system, the Flowmaster muffler. Yeah, there is a pinion guard on my nine inch. But uh, this works very well. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot to stop this thing so far, I will say that. It does not lack for power, does not lack for traction, for ground clearance. Been uh, very, very happy with the way the truck performs. So, don't have a whole lot of other mods left in store for the truck other than removing those back windows and doing the soft windows and the side window nets. So that pretty much, uh, that is Gilligan. The uh, 86 Bronco 2, straight axle, V8. Got any questions, hit me up below. Need any uh, tips or advice or you're thinking about doing it, check out the videos below. Literally every step of the way has been documented with every part that I've used and every step of the way. So check it out. Thanks.